So how do you transition carpet to a newly installed vinyl plank flooring transition? In this video, I'm going to break it down for you. What's cracking? It's Carpet Mike here from CarpetExpertBlueprint.com, bringing you all the tips, tricks, and strategies to be the mega successful flooring installer that you never dreamed you'd become. So we have a vinyl plank flooring reducer just installed glued in. Look at all that butter oozing out from under it. That's okay. We're going to show you how to clean that up as well. Because if you're anything like me, I hope you're not. But if you are, you're sloppy Joe. And we got to clean that up. So let's go ahead and take that tack strip there. We are going to butt that right up to the reducer. There's a concrete subfloor under that. So we got to use concrete tack strips. And we're sinking those nails right into the concrete there. And the reason we're butting it up to it, I'm going to show you in a minute here. So drive those nails home. Make sure your tack strip is good and secure. And then just give it a little wiggle wiggle everywhere to make sure it held. If it didn't hold add a few nails to it like I did right there. If you don't know where to get the tack strips from, just grab them from Lowe's, Home Depot, any of the big box joints. You can get a whole box of them for a little over $20. And clearly, I'm having some trouble getting this corner to stick right here. So if it happens to you, don't get discouraged. It is what it is. Man, 42 nails later. Look at that. Let's see if this one grabs. Maybe. Maybe not. Are we good? Give it a little wiggle wiggle. Do I need to add some more? So check that out. Yeah, when you're working with concrete subfloors, it can be a miserable experience trying to get that strip to stick. But it looks like we're in good shape now. I'm going to flop that carpet over. I'm going to get some of the little strings. This is an indoor-outdoor carpet that's in here. And the dogs had a field day with it already, pulling them loops. Keep that in mind when you're getting that stuff installed. Next, we're going to go ahead and take a razor-sharp blade and cut back the carpet here so we can go ahead and get ready to transition right to that new reducer. Lob that excess off. We only want about an inch of extra material overlapping the reducer. That's all we need. Anything more than that is just going to get in our way and cause issues. Next, we're going to bring our kicker into the scene. We're going to go ahead and bring an electric tacker into the scene. All right, life is good. We got all the tools we need. Now, let's start setting up shop and making this thing look like it had a phenomenal finish on it. Yeah, that's a thing too. So let's go ahead and fold this carpet under. We're going to get it right on top of the tech strip here work it all the way across all right everything's good there we're going to work it all the way across over here and this is just a rough fold the reason we do the turn and tack versus tucking it to the reducer is because it lasts longer and holds better now plenty of the old geezers in the business here are going to argue that point they're wrong so yeah listen to me this is what's up so we're going to go ahead and fold that under there we're going to take the tacker and just staple it right down into the tack strip that we installed there and like i said the reason we do it like this is because it helps prevent the carpet from working its way back out from being pinched in between the tack strip and the reducer and then just shredding and creating a disaster you'll get a lot more life out of it when you do your installs like this now I'm just searching away for staples. Now here's one thing everybody has on me. I'm about the most disorganized dude when it comes to keeping staples in line and all that. They're just flying all over the bag. It is what it is. So you got to dig them out, reload that staple gun, and continue stretching in. Let's get that final product now though. I'm going to stretch up the other side, making sure the carpet is butting up oh so nicely to that reducer. Throw a couple staples in there to make sure everything life is secure. Boom, boom, boom. And when you're shooting those staples in, you want to be at the furthest point of the carpet. So it's just pinching into it and dropping down. If you shoot too far back, it'll create this wonky bubble in the middle of the doorway and you don't want that. So shoot it as close to the edge as possible, making sure that those staples are going right into the tack strip. And look at that finish. Oh my goodness, everything is amazing. Now, as good of a job as we did on this with these dogs running wild in this house, I'm sure I'll be back there next week replacing all the carpet for them because they shredded it to death. But that's okay. That's called repeat business, and we love that. Now we got this glue that oozed up. We're just going to go ahead and take a linoleum knife here, scrape some of that excess up there. We're going to slap it right on top of a piece of scrap. Get that up. Then I'll probably just grab another scrap there, wipe it down once we have the bulk of the excess up so we're not smearing it everywhere. Not a big deal. Easy to clean when it's still wet, so keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and see what else we have here for our strategy session. A little piece of padding, clean it up, rub it all into the floor, just make it blend in, and biggity-bam. That's how you make things happen. Comment below with any questions, and I'll see you on the next. 